Let's get busy. Live from the Shooting from the Lip studio in Louisville, Kentucky, it's time for Shooting Stars with your hosts, Kevin Hale and Greg Unthank. What is up, everyone? I'm Kevin Hale up in this house tonight on this Wednesday night, December 14th, 2016. The latest and greatest shooting from the lip alive and kicking it here with the funk man, Mr. Craig Unthank. Craig, what's up? Hey, what's up, Mr. Kevin and everybody else? How are we? We're, we're doing Back good. home again. Good. Yeah. Gigs. Did you play, did you play any this past weekend? Ah, that's a good question. I'm trying <laughs> to remember. <laughs> nah, I played two Ks. Uh, Not this past two weeks weekend. Ago, wasn't it? Yeah, two. Yeah, it was yeah, two weeks ago. I saw you there. No, I I, there. no, I didn't play this past weekend. I was in the yeah. studio. I was in uh, the studio yeah. this past weekend. Yeah, that's what I done. I knew I'd done something. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. That was cool. What? Uh, what, what? What? What studio stuff were you doing? Can you share? Any? Yeah, it's uh, uh, with, with the band Blue Funk that we, we've been uh, writing music. You know, I speak of uh, often here on, on the show. It's uh, uh, Johnny Edwards, uh, Paul McGarry, Tony Frank. You know, we've been writing music for past, oh man, past year or so and, and doing some shows, you know, spotty here and there, uh, just trying to write music. We've got about nine, ten songs, and uh, we're going into Raised the Roof Studio, which is run by, by Steve Wilson, um, Kentucky headhunter Stevie Ray Vaughn fame. He's, he's from Louisville, and... Uh, He's got a, a new studio, and uh, we're going in there, man, and uh, laying down some tracks. I'm going, going to have a CD release uh, around Derby time, and uh, looking forward to it. Yeah, but that, man, you know, there's, there's there's only one thing I like doing better than than, than recording in the studio, and, and I'm not going to say what that is. Everybody can guess that, but uh, uh, recording, man, it's just the best thing in the world. It's a huge rush. Greg, for those who, you know, are not quick to wit, and can't decide or understand what you're saying is can you give a hint just to help uh no. uh, uh no it, 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 no. they should know if they don't then, wow wow, <laughs> wow. I, uh, I guess in some ways is that is that a uh shout out to uh mrs unthink sounds like it yeah it is it yeah, directly indirectly that's right nice I'll, yeah everything is still alive and kicking south of your border oh, yeah. huh <laughs> it kicks every once in a while yeah reminds you it's like hey looks yeah look at your watch it's been a while right <clears throat> but yeah but the recording right. thing back to that back to that yeah back to that. <laughs> yeah no that's that's what last weekend was and we, we got some other days yeah. lined up to get the thing finished up and ironed out and excited about it. So that's what I done. And it's, uh, let's give props uh, to who and what Blue Funk is. Uh, there's some very talented cats in that band, including, pr- you know, present company. And oh, man. that's another example where, Greg, not to, you know, show our age here, but there's over 100 right. years of music experience yeah. of Monks you oh. that forced them there. Well over Easy, 100 right? years, Easy. man. You know, yeah. yeah, I'm lucky. Mm-hmm. I'm very, very lucky to get to play with those cats, man. Because, I mean, yeah, yeah really uh, great bunch of guys, too. I mean, mm-hmm. not, just, not just great musicians, but, uh, you right. know, you can you can play with great musicians, and some of them can have an ego, and some of them kind of hard to play with. And But, but mm-hmm. we, we have a chemistry. We, we, we gel. Um, we listen to each other. We, we, we like each other's ideas. We we put something aside that we came up with because we like what the other guy came up with better. You know that that's really cool, man. That that's no e- ego involved. So mm-hmm. uh, see that right, was right. that was really cool. Yeah, that was my concern with this show, Greg. Is that I'm thinking, man, I am going to deal with somebody's ego on this show. But then after we got started, you know, 
we put yeah. you put your you put your ego in check. Put it aside. You know, we didn't put it we didn't have to talk about we didn't have to talk about you all the time. Just some of the you, time. You shine, dude. I'll let you shine. <laughs> let me, uh, very nice. I'm, I'm I'm glad. I'm glad I have. You know, I'm, you know and, and uh, speaking of shining, we've got some really cool guests tonight. We do. First segment, which we're gonna I think what I'm calling in now, I'm going to go do uh, a mic check and screen them. But uh, Mary Beth, Van Meter, and you've informed me, Mr. Van Meter, Mike Van Meter, of uh, Mary Mary, Mr. they're going to be joining. Meter. Mike is uh, not only um, in a band, but he also uh, does cars too, right? We'll talk about that uh, later. Yeah, he has your his, car. Yeah, he has his yeah. business. He has his own business. Yeah. mechanic. Cool. Mary and Mike will be on the first segment. Second segment, we'll have Al Harley from Boozer. Good story with uh, with Al, and he's doing better. Get into some it's of big the, his uh, big Al. Yes, and uh, in between segments, we're going <laughs> to debut on this show. A Christmas song, and we'll we'll go into the details of that later. So, don't you have a, a gig coming up this weekend? While you're promoting that, I'm going to screen our calls or guests. And uh, yeah, uh, Spare Change Millionaires will be playing over the uh, the Horseshoe Casino. Uh, the Smoking Rye is is what it's called. It's the uh, the restaurant there in the lobby, uh, restaurant bar, great food. Um, they have alcohol. That's always a plus. And uh, we start at nine thirty. Play to one thirty, and uh, it's always a good time over there. So um, get your gamble on, come out, and uh, we'll be playing your '80s rock and uh, enjoying ourselves. It's always a good time. Those guys know how to know how to have fun. So bring it on. And uh, we've got Mike and Mary Beth Van Meter coming up. Uh, after that, we've got Al Harley coming up. South End Fame, Big Al, uh, Boozer, and, uh, and there you have it. Mary, Mary, Mary Beth, Van Meter, and her husband, Mike. Start with Mary Beth. What's up, Mary Beth? Hey, what's going on? Hey, Mary Beth. Hey, Greg. Hey, Greg. What's what you doing, earlier. baby? I'm good. Mr. Mike, you on there, too? Yeah. I'm here. <laughs> Kevin, I love these guys, man. These are great people. We played together back when Hector was a pup. Uh, <laughs> Hector was a pup. Wait a minute! I don't get yeah, that. Hector, What's that mean? He was a pop. He was a pop back then. You know, Hector. Hector? Who's Who's Hector? Yeah. I don't know who Hector it, it, is. It's is that an expression? Same. If it's an expression, it's an I don't expression. get it. It's an expression. Okay. If you're from the South End, you say it's a saying. But uh, yeah, wow. Hector was a pop. That means a long Psych. time ago we played together. Uh, I'm trying to think exactly when was it? Like late '80s? I would. Yes, it would have had to have been. Right. Because when did we do our switch to Mary Mary? Right after that. It was called Catch-22. Catch-22, yeah. that's right. Yeah. We got some cool pictures still laying around somewhere. We do. <laughs> Steve McGee we're, we're, and uh, Brian Corella. Yeah. We're both uh, Greg and Mary Beth. We're Greg and Mike rocking the mullet back then. Well, Greg, for sure. <laughs> I was, absolutely. We were talking Mike's about that. Mike always earlier. had, Mike's a, a naturally curly head of dude, so he just had like uh, a big mess of hair. Yeah. So he yeah. had. The I've, always, I've always followed whatever. Yeah. I've always followed whatever Greg's hairstyle was. That's what I always. Was. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice. I, I've noticed you. You haven't followed here lately. You still have hair. <laughs> <laughs> silver Sasquatch, baby. That's right. <laughs> I like silver. silver you know, back it's, then Kevin now, also had big caterpillar. Big big what? Caterpillar on my lip. I had the big mustache. Oh, and yeah. the big caterpillar. Yeah. You did. Yeah. yeah. God. Well, you know, Mary and Mike, Mary Beth and Mike, it wouldn't be a show, a Wednesday night show, if Greg didn't have guests on that uh, didn't allow us to go back down memory lane for Greg. Because this is like always, to me, a reunion show for Greg. You know, it always basically starts with, well, we started, I played with these guys back in, in this case, back in the late 80s, 90s, or 20, 30 years ago. And then it's all the stories start spilling out. So, Greg, what makes this show any different than any other show? Nothing. Right? They're all, Nothing. Like, it's all for me. You know, oh, for for me. Yeah. <laughs> let's 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 get the guests involved. We'll start with Mary okay. Beth. Mary All Beth, right. how long have you been doing the music thing? And give us a short, sweet bio of you. A short, sweet bio of me. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, so 
<laughs> it started like in high school, believe it or not. I was at a friend's party and I saw a super cute dude driving a Camaro Z28. And I was like, who is this man? I must right. meet him. Rocking the Z. I hear you, buddy. <laughs> it was a sweet ride. And I was like, I've got to find out who is driving this car. I've got to meet this man. Mm. So I managed to get myself invited to a party at his house. And lo and behold, I discovered he not only drove a Camaro Z28, but he owned his own PA. Mm. Uh-oh. They just got <laughs> serious now. Yeah, see, you, you got to <laughs> own your own PA when you can't rip solos. <laughs> oh. Yeah, oh. I've heard. I've heard you can't about tread that. On, if you can't tread on the guitar, then you got to own your damn own damn PA. <laughs> nice, nice, That's Mark. Right. Hey, well, I going. was very impressed, and, I, and so I, I then began to figure out how can I not only date this man but weasel my way into his band. You said band, oh, yeah. right? Band, B A N D. Band, band. band. Okay, that band. is it. Yeah. So we were playing at Dutch's by the time I was a senior in high school. Where did you wow, did you wow. go high school? What high school did you go to, Prima? I went to Assumption. Assumption. Oh, one of those Catholic girls. All right, go. Yep, Mike went to St. X. Had to have that. that. There you go. And <laughs> there you go. So <laughs> so uh, so the go ahead. I was just we, gonna say so one band. Playing band. Like a, oh, that was um, yeah, what, the new twist. Oh yeah, I remember you guys talking about that. Yeah, we were just children. All right. And we had Fenner Kastner on drums, and Paul Nevitt was in the band. Paul Nevitt. Playing some Righteous Hammond organ. Yes. Oh, well. Sure. <laughs> so uh, we, we've been playing on and off since, like, 85. Oh, cool. And then, <clears throat> then Catch-22 came around. Yes. And then things got real serious, because Greg got in the band. I see him again. Greg, you... Craig, you were part of that band, Craig? Catch twenty two? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I, I really don't remember how that came about. Oh, I do. I was working at Doo Wop at the time and Brian Carella taught at Doo Wop and he was guitar playing. And Oh wow, I don't remember that. Yeah, he approached me, he said, I know some people putting a band together and I'm gonna be playing guitar and, and he wanted to know if I'd be interested in coming over and jamming around and seeing seeing how that went and I believe everyone was there except, you know, I think y'all were just looking for a drummer. Cause, uh Went over your went over to your house, Mike, and played in the basement. Went over to, to my mother's house. Fred. Your mother's that's right, your mother's house. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was basically the cradle of the band. And and I'm not gonna you know what? I'm gonna spare her name in some of the clubs we played because 'cause I'm gonna really sound old, so no, because yeah. if they're if we can't if we can't mention Toy Tiger at least one time on a show, then we're not really going <laughs> no, down okay. memory lane. <laughs> we didn't make that. One. We didn't make that. One. We didn't. We, no, uh, Catch Twenty Two didn't. Mary Mary used to play the Tiger oh, quite yeah. a bit, but not. Uh, I remember a road 22. trip, man, to uh, Columbus, Indiana. Columbus, maybe? The, yeah, the, the Days in. Yeah. Yep, yeah. That days was, that was an uh, adventure. Yeah, we got we all they gave us rooms, and then mm. we did a Friday and Saturday and good old back in the days the hotel bar gigs. Yeah, I mean, nice. Yeah, we did we and did the, Mardi uh, Gras. I remember playing Mardi Gras. Yeah, and uh, mm. where else? Where did else we play Rascals together? We played <laughs> Rascals. There's a flash. That's, that's that the one I was to think spectacular. Of. Man. <laughs> I'm going to lay down and cry in a minute. <laughs> so what about, I think I already what am. What about the DJ? What about the DJ at Rascals? Man, we would be like rocking out some heavy metal tune, and then we, as soon as we quit, <laughs> it would turn into like some super hip hoppy girl baby, thing. Baby, it's like, baby, baby, oh baby. my God, every break they would crank yeah. out that song. Oh, yeah. it's like, what are we doing here, man? <laughs> That's now, Greg. Check this mm. out. Do you realize, you know, usually when we have, we do a segment when there's like, in this case, two guests uh, and, you know, two, they're, they're calling, each of them are calling in. Uh, usually, usually there's kind of like a, a lapse in, you know, going back and forth, but just the timing of, you know, hearing the voice, whatever. Do you, I, you realize if you've listened closely, the timing for Mary Beth and Mike tonight have been impeccable and you know why that's the case. <laughs> Well, yeah, because they're looking so, at each so. other. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's true. Where, where, that where are you? She's actually in the kitchen. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually laying on the couch. <laughs> so you're laying oh, on the couch. We're in, in the studio. 
I'm laying on the couch, yeah, she's I'm, in the kitchen. But aren't we in some studio together, all hanging out, you know, talking? Is that what we're doing? You know, I started to say that sounded like perfect marriage, but I'm not going to say that. Oh, <laughs> that, oh yeah. that's bad, no, ain't that's it? Not, that's, why, that's why I didn't say it. That's why I didn't say it, because it's bad. That's bad. I wouldn't do you that. weren't implying that Mary Beth knows her role. Oh, I'm that's saying, not what you're if saying, I right? Were, right. If, if I were to say something like that, that would be bad. Okay. Hey, we tried to get well, we Carl and David... We we tried to get Carl and David and Josh to all call in too, but they they're a bunch of chickens. They wouldn't do it. Although Carl is mm. is is playing tonight at at somewhere Baxter's. Yeah, Baxter's. But yeah, he yeah. doesn't carry yeah. over from Josh or David. But yeah. So, so what is, this, I'm is looking, the secret? Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just say I'm looking at the Mary Mary uh, Facebook page, and I have Ooh. to admit I've not heard you guys play yet, but that will change mm-hmm. very soon. Uh, um, Nineties rock. Were you at the uh, Kirk Kirby's uh, benefit? Yeah, but I think I think yeah. that's right. You played there, but I think I got there either no, wait a minute, you did. That you. That's right. You all did play there. I rem- okay. Yes, sir. We all right, did. I stand corrected. God, I stand your corrected memory cause... is outstanding. Or we made the yeah. impression. No, it was it pro- no, it wasn't that. Wasn't that? I'm. I was. I remember. <laughs> I was in and out. Wait a minute. Did you play? Did you all play right before or after uh, the ass haulers? Wasn't it like close or something? I don't know if you remember, but I, I may be played right after. But anyways, right after. We played and right after half case. Yeah. Okay. Um. All right. Well, I st- all right. We have. I've been in the same venue with you, but I might have stepped out. It's not. No disrespect. Just, all right. He was not uh, that day. So many could have been. So many, so many people. That's yeah, it. It, it was a whirlwind N- evening. Yeah. <laughs> not '90s rock is your all's uh, flavor, if you will. No. What? What? Give us some of the the rock that would be on your the set list. We do it's, like '90s grunge is my jam. I, I'm a right. Pearl Jam girl from way back. Nice. Um, cool. But we throw in some really cool stuff like Harley Simon and rock it up. Oh, cool. So we'll like we do "You're yeah. So Vain" and it's just hilarious because I didn't un- I didn't understand that the song was going to be as popular as it was with people significantly younger than I. And the first time we played back in January, they just went nuts for this song. Like, cool. Wait, wait, yeah. so you played that have... at the benefit. You played that at the benefit, didn't you? Yes. I, okay. Now things are starting to come back. I it's do. It's starting to that, come to him now. Yeah, that's, that song stood out of the, the whole gig, the whole day, the whole benefit. That song did stand out. Oh, man, that song is a blast to play. Yeah. Just, it's something different, and people dig it, which always makes me happy. Right. And along with, like, Carly Simon, we do some Pretenders. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we do some 80s, we do a couple 70s tunes, and we do some 90s. But everything we do, we just try to give it a little extra energy, a little extra punch, get everybody out there dancing. We're mm-hmm. very guitar strong, so... If, if we might play a song that has like a lot of keyboards in it, but you know we have Carl Stuck and Mike Van Meter to crank up their Marshalls and make it chunky so everybody can get out there and have a good time. Yep. And uh, who else is in the band? I know who else, but uh, tell tell everyone else who else is in the band. We have a bass player named Josh Dunning, who is amazing, great sound, super cute, and Mr. I David Hoback on I drums. Did, I didn't notice that he was a cute guy. Isn't <laughs> he? Fan. And of course, I'm pretty cute. picky on that. Right, right. They they have to be cute if they're going to be on the stage with me. There you go. Right. Hence Mike. Hence right. The sas- <laughs> silver Sasquatch. The silver, <laughs> silver Sasquatch. <laughs> silver That's silver. a whole other story. That's a whole well, other story oh, for the end of the show. Uh, all right, we'll, we'll save that. Yes, I do want to hear We got that. one more dude to talk about and yeah. Mary Mary, then yeah. we'll give you the silver Sasquatch story. All right, all right go for it. What? Go ahead, Mary. I said David Hoback. Oh, you did. Okay. <laughs> oh, you did. Okay. Okay. All right. okay. So let's let's have some let's let's have a good sound bite here. What is the story of the Silver Sasquatch? I'm not even supposed to be talking about the Silver Sasquatch thing, so I wasn't happy about it. <laughs> that was funny though. You got to tell them what happened. We got in trouble. Mike and I tend to get in trouble when we go see other band play. Mm. Okay, well, so the, you, the some people story call is, it trouble. I, yeah, some I'm, people would call it trouble, but I would say probably normal, but go ahead. <laughs> Am I almost out of time? <laughs> no, we don't uh, want no, to no. 
go. So we went to the Goo Goo Dolls. We went to the Goo Goo Dolls show at the Brown Theater, what, three weeks ago, whatever it was. Yeah. And um, this nice couple was next to us, and they were partying. And uh, let's see, I went up to go get a drink. I came back, and he was dancing with Mary Beth, all good, having a good time. And then oh, there was conversation back and forth. <laughs> yeah. And Keep we were going. laughing, having Keep a good time, going. and also, and I can't remember all the exact details, but at one point in time, he turned, he turned around to me and said, man, you look like the Silver Sasquatch. <laughs> and I said, man, dude, I'm going to whoop your ass. And him <laughs> and his girlfriend were gone. <laughs> I never and saw him the rest of the night. You scared him off, man. <laughs> So that was the Please. first time of ever, ever hearing that three weeks ago. <laughs> he thought he thought uh, he had some beef jerky and was going to match with silver sasquatch. Oh, uh, <laughs> dude, that's a, so, that's so a this, for you. Wait a minute. So this that's nickname really is recent? No, Re- uh, my, yeah, my, it's not. Look, hold on, hold on. That's not my nickname. <laughs> Let's don't throw that. <laughs> I think it is now. Well, wait a minute. I am, I am no, confused here. <laughs> I'm confused here. <laughs> Greg, I said, do you, you need to speak for said... Wait a minute. Ahead, Silver Sasquatch Let's... is his nickname. <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> I'll sit it now. <laughs> uh, All right, we'll move on. Future. That's the next gig. Okay. Yeah. Move on, kids. All right, maybe is you. that something? Right. Something I'll be. I'll, you guys can share with me on a night I see you. Let's we'll save it for that. Uh, yeah. Totally. Oh, I, you know what? I, don't, right. ca- I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's pretty yeah. much it. That's just, Mike scared them all. They were they were hitting on his lady, and and Mike said no, no way, no can do, <laughs> and uh, move on before I whoop your ass. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that part I got. Woman. Yeah, that part I got. It, I, I, it sounded like there's still more to be told about the the nickname. And I, there is. I don't think but I've got it. It's all good. But it's all, okay. All right. <laughs> we'll save that for later. Um, you guys, uh, you all have a special gig coming up soon, don't you, uh, at Baxter's? Is that right? We do. It's a party gig. Uh, night before Christmas Eve, December 23rd. So everybody can come out and have a good time before they have to go enjoy the holidays with their family. They can come <laughs> and have just... a good time. <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah, before it all goes downhill. <laughs> yeah. That's right. <laughs> have a, have the real celebration of actors and then, you know, go do your duty. <laughs> and then go, go meet uh, cousin Eddie that pulls up with his broken down. Water <laughs> <bag on. laughs> exactly. So, so we're planning a big party. We're, we're even working up some Christmas tunes. So uh, we're we're cool. just sitting here tonight trying to figure out what Christmas songs we're gonna play. So uh, that that'll be fun. We're all, that's the thing. We're trying to always do something a little bit different at every show just to keep everybody on I their toes. That. that keeps it fresh, man. Everybody look forward to it. That's great. Yeah, it's cool. never the same show twice. Yeah, that's a rare thing, for real. Because you know how how some bands can you know do the same thing over again. You kind of kind of kind of know what they're going to do before you get there and stuff. So it's really good to, to have a little variety going on each show. Well, it's definitely fun for us, too, because we yeah. just, we in, actually enjoy band practice, which I don't know if a lot of people really dig that. But we re- just like getting together and working up the tunes and keeps it fresh and always have a much better time. Mm-hmm. And we keep getting requests, which I enjoy. Oh, yeah? I, honestly, what? well, you know, we, we didn't play for like 20 years. Yeah. And so yeah, when we were together, I don't, I don't know that story. Hold on, I don't know that story. So you're saying Mary Mary, you guys were a band. Mary Mary was a band, or was it Catch Twenty Two then? And then their twenty twenty year break, and then it came back as Mary. What what's the story oh, there? Mary, Mary. No, oh, Mary, Mary Mary okay. got together. Way we, more we, I think we. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, Mary Mary <laughs> kind of kicked off in nineteen ninety ish. Okay. Think? Yeah. And we played until about 96 or 97. And oh. then my husband got the bright idea to open a car repair shop. <laughs> <laughs> and apparently owning your own business takes a lot of time and effort. So I've heard that. Mary yeah. Mary oh, kind of took a high raising, uh, raising kids also takes a little bit of effort itself. Yeah, mm-hmm. it does. You know, there's those 8 o'clock in the morning soccer games. And right. sometimes when you're getting yeah. back from a gig at 7.30 and – Somebody mm. needs to be at HYR soccer at eight. That's kind of a drag. Yeah. 
I so my head would be laying down. Right. My head, my head would be laying down on a table at Twig and Leaf at six o'clock in the morning and, and <laughs> on a Saturday, and have to go to a freaking <laughs> soccer game. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody so, slapped the oh. silver Sasquatch. He's got to get up. He's got to leave the Twig and Leaf. <laughs> oh, uh, a shout out to the twig and leaf we yeah, some, yeah. yeah. so when that the band yeah when the band got back together when you know you started performing again was it i mean what what was it what just the timing was good the kids were at a certain age uh mike got his uh his own business at that point in good you know good standing and you know what was it, the time? it kind of came why? It actually came down to Mary Beth had been wanting to do it for several years, and I was still like on the fence about it because mm-hmm. I wanted my heart to be in it. And right. um, our youngest daughter got married, and uh, Thumper and the Plaid Rabbits played the wedding reception. And along with them, we had Mike Alger came and played drums. John Mann came up from Nashville and sang the song for me and Megan's dance to, and he oh, played some cool. Tim Crackle. He played some Tim Crackle songs, and yeah. Paul Culligan switched a job with Mike Alger so Mike could come play drums, and, and Paul Culligan went and played the Mudcats gig at Burnt Town Forest, and it was like this whole fiasco <laughs> to organize all these musicians to come play the wedding. And so, and then we ended up doing a couple songs, and it was like, man, you guys should get back together and play again. So that's how it all evolved. It was the and wedding then, reception was a freaking it was blast. A re- we had it was so a blast. Fun. It was fun. And uh, Billy Hardison from Headliners was like, man, you guys need to do a reunion gig at Headliners. Wow, and wow. that was January of last year, and that's what we did, and it was packed, and it was fun. It was like, well, okay. <laughs> so here, here we are. And it's I think you can great. believe, like, yeah. we've been out of it for, like, 20 mm-hmm. years. And so when mm-hmm. we were getting ready to play at Headliners, it was actually this past January. And uh, we were oh. nervous. Like, dude, we've been out of this game for, like, 20 years. Is anybody going to show up? <laughs> Is this going to be <laughs> terrible? And we had a really good turnout. And one thing that's really okay. fun, people our age are coming with their kids, and they're all, all right. jamming together. <laughs> So yeah. we've got people That's our cold. age who have like 25, 30 year old kids, and they're all coming together, jamming mm-hmm. out the Pearl Jam. Yes. Well, <laughs> you what see I, mom what out think... there crowd surfing. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I think it's is a really blast, cool. man. I, I think it's really cool that your daughter got married just so you guys could get back together again. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's dedicated, take him, man. take him one for the mm-hmm. team there. I like that. I was just <laughs> thinking that. Oh, dang. Yeah. <laughs> She's supposed to be listening, so. <laughs> well, what's her daughter name? shout out megan shout out megan megan yeah. hey, right. well megan and katie talking. both yeah katie, they bring all their friends katie. to the gigs my gosh mm-hmm. katie was just a tiny tiny little little sweet little uh, oh man little little susie girl who looking <laughs> girl when uh when uh we have we, we have a, we have a yes we have a great home video with uh uh, Not be nostalgic, but we have a great home video. We're playing City Fair on Main Street, and uh, Mary Mary is, and Katie's standing there right in the very front through all the songs, and she's like five years old. And, uh, yeah. Steve Osborne, Steve Osborne's playing guitar, so oh, that's kind of wow. cool. But uh, yeah, it's, it's just, we still watch it all the time. So it's really yeah, fun <laughs> to see Katie like yeah. five years that's old. Very well, yeah, she's standing directly in front of me on the stage mm-hmm. with her arms crossed like she is not at all amused. And at one point, yeah. she puts her fingers <laughs> in her ears. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not happy about this at all. It's like, um, I don't think I like the song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hilarious. Are you too loud? I yeah. got a cool. cool memory of my son who's 15 now, but when he was two, uh, Silver Loop was playing the fair in the bud tent. And mm-hmm. it was it was pretty packed on a Saturday night and it was his birthday. Oh, yeah. And uh, mm-hmm. we actually got him up on stage, and Tommy held him. Oh, sweet! And uh, the the whole tent sang "Happy Birthday" to him. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that is so cool! He yeah. was two years old. He really didn't know what was going on, but man, his eyes were big. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. then he Makes was the immediately feel like looking rock for stars. Mama. Yeah, where's Mama? I don't know what's going on here, but this mm-hmm. is not cool. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Does he play anything now? Uh, he plays a fishing pole right now. He is oh, okay. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> oh, right. Man, not at all. Yep. He's really addicted to fishing. Fifteen years old. Yeah. He just assumed go by himself somewhere and and stand on the side of the water and and throw a pole in and try and catch some fish. I love that. 
Yeah. See, yeah. this this is the part of the show, Greg, where I kind of worry about you and all of your music buddies from way back when <laughs> getting together because then instead of music you, you you all start talking about kids and you know uh, not, okay. I mean, well and greg but... <laughs> see and, but see greg knows too that we have we have a lake house at rough river so you know we're all about oh, fishing okay all right <laughs> yes yeah. 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 okay well kevin you want to get Very to know cool. the you know the yeah. people behind the music you know that's what you're looking mm-hmm. for right yeah, uh, you're right. You're right, and uh, and it was actually that's a cool story. The uh, the fact that the the wedding reception kind of kick started this. Uh, it did. You know, it really did. You know, Mary Mary 2.0. Is that what kind of say? <laughs> yes, yeah. definitely. All right, um, all right, guys. As we're rounding down this segment, I do what I call round of shots. We'll do real round of shots the next time we're uh, in a uh, bar room. But tonight, I'm going to throw uh, six questions at you both. It's a kind of a quick Q&A, just to, you know, another way of getting to know you a little better. Have fun with it. Okay. Same question to both of you, and I'll alternate with each of you. Start with you, Mary Beth. Okay. What was, what was the first concert you attended? The first concert I ever attended was Diana Ross at Freedom Hall. Mm. My parents Diana took me. Wow. I, I was a child. I think maybe... 10 years old or so. Wow. Were you impressed? No, that's not a raw. That's um, well, it was hilarious. My sister, who is younger than I, we got home and mom and dad asked her what she thought of the show. And Lisa, my little sister, apparently thought it was a great show. And she said that she thought maybe she would really make it someday. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Diana Ross. Just speaking of Diana Ross. She yeah. might make it someday. <laughs> that's yeah. horrible. Um, yeah. Mike, Jeff same Pencil. question. Yeah, same question, Mike. Same question was the Who at Freedom Hall. Man. Oh. Yep. Um, I remember. I remember. I went and get, bought a green army camo jumpsuit and black boots to wear to match Pete Townsend. To match Pete. That's right. And I think I was probably like a freshman in high school or so. And I remember wow. leaving there going, man, I want to do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, wow. yeah, that was, you know well, what? That was a pretty, pretty, big, a picture, pretty big night. We wow. have a picture of Mike in that jumpsuit playing mm-hmm. a talent show at St. X. Yeah, I wore that jumpsuit <laughs> really? for a couple of years. For that. that might mm-hmm. just have to get on the Mary Mary Facebook page. Yeah. There you go. There you go. <laughs> I think yeah, it I should. I think it should. Yeah. <laughs> Great. <laughs> All right, Mike. Next question. Start with Mike. Uh, what would be a celebrity you would like to get stuck in an elevator with? Oh gosh, celebrity I like get stuck in an elevator with. See, I'm terrible at this stuff. Well, actually, right. the mm, one of the first people that come well, there's actually two and they're both singers one would be i guess miles kennedy would be one. Oh man mike yeah i don't know why but he just comes to my mind cool. <laughs> just to see what's up with that guy yeah. um a celebrity and i'm just a, like a movie type person god see, I don't, I'm whoever there, so. whoever whoever you know uh yeah um, um god they're all they, they've all died <laughs> <laughs> that's bad at God. That's the truth. Yeah. Okay. Guy. How about how about somebody like Keith Richards? Like, what the hell's up with that? Okay. I don't know. Yeah, Something he's, like that. he's right. still alive. That one. That one. Yeah. I don't he's know. He's, 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 yeah. Yeah. He's, <laughs> all right, Mary Beth. Same question. Who would you like to be stuck in an elevator with? If I were to get stuck in an elevator with Amy Schumer, it would make my world. She is hilarious. <laughs> there you go. She is just too funny. I, I feel like we would get into a whole lot of trouble together. Uh, I'm, I can sense. It. Yeah, I, I think you're on to that. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. All right. Uh, number three, Mary Beth, during a gig, what would be a pet peeve? A pet peeve during a gig? Yeah. Somebody would just drive you crazy. That could be a headliners. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> I don't. Did I have a pet peeve at headliners? No, no, no. Go ahead, honey. I'm not here. No, I, I really <laughs> don't get upset at gigs. Yeah. Well, it, the, the people screaming to play certain songs and stuff does it? Does that bother you or? You know, it does not bother me at all. You can't. 
so you you were like you're so happy during you know from the first note to the last every unless i really threw something up i mean i hate making mistakes so if i threw something up i get really upset so because i don't like making the band look bad and so if i go off Mm. the rails and get lost it really upsets me but as far as the crowd or you know other Mm. stuff happening is Nothing really bothers me, man. I'm playing music in public, and they're paying me to do it. That's you know, I mean, that's a good how point. Can I bitch about that. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> well, fair enough. People, All right. people showed up and they're dancing. It's pretty awesome. She's not taking it for granted, that's for sure. Yeah, no, okay. man, it's that's a blast. Good. And have you have you noticed they're tearing down Phoenixville Tavern? No, I did. I heard. I heard. I that. mean, there's fewer and fewer places to play, and I just, mm. I guess, I just feel really lucky to get that opportunity and have fun mm, with it. Yeah. Gotcha. Mike, do That's you right. have a pet peeve when playing? Um, man, I don't either, really. I'm like so. I'm I'm sorry. I don't mean to ruin your question, but man, it's all. I I love playing with the people I'm playing with, and of course with Mary Beth. And um, no, I don't. I don't care what the hell happens. All right. <laughs> I don't have a pet peeve. Okay. As long That's, as the stays on, the lights stay yeah. on, and we can keep playing, man. Let's okay. Do yeah. it. All right. Yeah. Number four. Let's see. Start with Mike. Uh, Mike, tell us about a, a scar that you have and how did you get it? A scar? Scar. Mm, a scar. Well, I was at this Goo Goo Doll show like three weeks ago. <laughs> 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 and this you got dude called me the silver Sasquatch. <laughs> mm. And we should and you and we should see him, right? We should see him. If you yeah, know, your scar really looks bad about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's mine. <laughs> All right. Mary Beth, do you have a good scar story? I I don't think it's a good story, but I have a really good scar. I have a Which gigantic is? scar on my left hand that I got actually Christmas shopping, <laughs> which is horrid. I was with the kids, did you, and Mike was there. Did you, did you like, Ball. knock somebody over? Did you, like, beat up somebody for taking the last uh, Tickle Me Elmo <laughs> back in the day or something? <laughs> I think I must have got the remnants of a fight because I went to Man. pick something up off, off of a shelf, and there was a giant piece of broken glass, and I did oh, not no. know it was that, there. And I grabbed that sucker and was mm. bleeding all over the door. That hurts. It sucks. Mm. And I, I do yeah. have quite a nice scars to this day. Mm. The old bastard Manor Mall. I uh, know. Back in the day. All right, uh, Mary Beth, uh, favorite phone app? My favorite phone app? Well, I think right now my favorite phone app is probably like Instagram because I like mm-hmm. playing with the photos, editing them, making them fun, mm-hmm. and then, of course, sharing them to Facebook. Of course, you 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 have to every now and then remind us that you are a chick. So thank you for doing that. <laughs> you don't like making cute pictures and sharing them to social media. <laughs> I just, I think it's a chick thing. So, but and you know, that's anyway. Mike, do you uh, have a favorite phone app? Uh, not really. YouTube. <laughs> YouTube. Okay. Oh, that's see, there you go. Is that a that's phone good. app? It they is a phone. It's, app. All, it's an app. It is an app. Okay. You probably yeah, what use your me. laptop, but yeah, it is an app. It is an app. So we'll say we'll stick with YouTube. No, no, I use it on. I use uh, it on yeah. Okay. All right. Let's see. Number six. Last last shot question. Starting with Mike. Mike, if you could had access to a time machine and go anywhere in your past, living past or all the way back to the dinosaurs, where would you go? Where or what would I? Where would I go? Where? Uh, yeah. Where would I go? Yeah. Where? Okay. Well, I'm gonna say something music related and not something socially and politically that I should probably say. <laughs> Uh, how about, <laughs> oh, yeah, you're supposed to do something with the Dalai Lama or something. How about, uh, I'm going to say Woodstock, the original Woodstock. That's a, yeah, right. That's, yeah. that's a popular, I'll go hang popular out the, yeah. Is that a popular answer? It is. Well, What's, for you mu- musicians, it's very popular. Yeah. 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 Something, like, something like that. Yeah. yeah, I guess. All right. <clears throat> Mary Beth, what about you? Well, since I got a little more time to think about it. Um, I know. That's the trade-off he going back and forth. Up that, I know, it's pretty sweet. Uh, mm. Mike brought up that City Fair gig that we played when Katie was little. And mm. I think I might go back to that because we had Steve Osborne and we had Matt mm. Barnett playing drums. Mm. And I would love to play a gig with those two guys. Mm. 
So that and uh, it would just be really cool to be in that moment and really, you know, take it in. Right. Yep, I understand cool. that. Yep. Man, All right. Those were the round of those were the round of shots, albeit a couple of them just didn't seem to fly. But you know, we'll do real shots uh, down the road, and I'll. I bet you if I ask those same questions after a few shots, I'll probably get, you know, different answers, better answers, maybe. Oh. Well, maybe I'll pay attention to this actor's gig and come up with a pet peeve. Okay. There you go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, before we let you go, share with us. Uh, we know you got the bachelor's gig coming up December 23rd. It's a merry, merry Christmas. Uh, any other gigs in the very near future and share with us uh, all of your social media. We are playing at Gerstle's. This will be our first time playing at Gerstle's in January. Is that the 21st? It is. Cool. So we will be playing that gig. Um, Social media, we have our Merry Merry Facebook page. And we love when people come out and, you know, shoot video or take pictures and hashtag everything with Mary Mary 502. So if you go on Instagram or Facebook and look for that hashtag Mary Mary 502, you will find us. Cool. And one thing we're asking people to do, we're, you know, Baxter's has a really cool gigantic video wall. And mm-hmm. we are asking people to look for their most fun or ridiculous Christmas photo from mm-hmm. childhood. Nice. And email it to us at Mary Mary in 502 at gmail.com. And we are going to put them on that big giant Baxter's video wall. <laughs> oh, that's very cool idea. That's a that's great a idea. I thought that, that's mm. going to be great. It's a lot of fun. So we want to, you know, include everybody in the party. Yeah. Good idea. Sweet. I like it. Yes. All right. Mary Beth, Mike, Mary Mary is the band. I appreciate you taking the time out. Greg and I appreciate you taking the time out tonight. Uh, we will check you out. Actually, I th- I think I might. I'm going to jet to Baxter's. That'll be a, I don't think I have anything to do that, that night, so I think I'm going to do that. So. See, you got to do something fun to get ready for the holidays. Exactly. That's right. Before I have to deal, before I have to deal with my family, like you all kind of. That's it, around. man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like that. We'll get some shots. Yes, we'll do that, too. <laughs> Good stuff tonight, guys. Glad to uh, have you guys Thank on. Thank you all for the opportunity. It's nice yep. chatting. Mm-hmm. Yes. It's good talking to you, Greg. Greg. Love you. I love you guys. Thanks for coming on. I miss you, baby. Yeah, love I'm you, glad. Uh, glad the band's doing doing really good. That, that's awesome that you guys are out doing it again. I, really cool. Thank you for your support, man. I really appreciate it. Oh, you're Thanks, welcome, brother. Right. Good stuff, guys. All right, guys. Take, care. take care. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Have a good night. Bye-bye. Merry Christmas. Bye. Mary Beth and Mike from the band Mary Mary Three or Mary Mary Three. Why am I? Why did I say Mary Mary Three? Mary Mary. Mary Mary. I don't know why you were there. I don't know. I don't know. Are you drunk? Uh, no, not. But you know, um, you know what time it is. You know, I might not be drunk, but the notion of getting drunk is very appealing. <laughs> so before I turn the mic on for our, our next guest. Let's give him the proper introduction, Greg. Ready to race some hell, Greg? Man, you just can't help it. You just can't help to bob your head when that's a jamming, can you? Listen. Let's get drunk. <laughs> <Enough> <laughs> Who needs a drink? <laughs> Al Harley, what What's is up? up? <laughs> What's happening, guys? What's up, Al? How, How are you, you doing, buddy? Doing pretty good. Just finished off a drink. I'm in my bathroom, so I get some private time. <laughs> <laughs> that's Listen you know you what, man. I hate to say it, but sometimes I can't even get private time in the bathroom. You know, <laughs> in the morning it's impossible. I always get a, I always get a knock on the door and a hurry up. You know, I was like, come on, yeah, in the morning it. definitely. Yeah, no. man. How at you night feeling, time, they're on the couch. What's that? I said at night time they're all they're already asleep on the couch. 
Yeah. That, that's when we get our business done is after they go to bed. That's I it, know. That's it. Yeah. Getting well, taking care it. of bit taking care of business and doing our best thinking is where where it's at. Oh yeah. There, so. Most most definitely. Al Big Al you South End South End knows him as Big Al. Big Al. So okay, so, we'll stay with we'll go with Big Al. So clarify the South Big End. Al, Big Al um, That's right, South End. I got here's the story. I got to meet Big Al. I do remember this. It was uh, at it. It's funny we mentioned it earlier. It was at the Kirby's yeah. Benefit TKs. Right. Got to meet Big Al there, and then uh, I got to hang out with him one night. Went to go see the Ass Hollers. Big Al was there. He got on stage, sang some songs, sung his what I recognize as a signature song of him. Let's get wrong. So. Um, Al, I know two of them. What is <laughs> what has been up with you lately? Uh, just coming out of some surgery. I had some surgery two months ago, and I'm just recuperating. So how's it going, uh, buddy? I, I'm doing pretty good. I'm very thankful. The wound is closed up. I've had ten inches of colon removed, my oh, appendix yeah. removed, and right. um, the Lord left me with a colostomy bag for another three weeks, and then I get that removed and go back to. Being yeah. me. There you go. Well, I'm, yeah, sure, I'm so, sure you've got some, you've got some restrictions, good. though. What's that? I said you, you have some restrictions, don't you? Yeah, well, the doctor said go back to doing what you what you normally do, you know. So right. I've been to work and stay busy. Um, you've been, but I do get, you, I, I don't know if it's that I'm getting older, but I do get tired a lot quicker. All right. I do that, too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like as soon as I, yeah. I get off work, I drive home, I'm like, I'm going to sit on the couch for a minute. You know, before I even get a drink. <laughs> and that's what now, I was talking about, man. Uh, you know, the, yeah, the drinking. Or, or do, do you get to uh, do you get to, to partake in your party activities like you used to, or has he curbed that down even after the healing well, process? I, I would say right now I'm about ninety eight percent alcohol free. Ninety eight. Damn. Yeah. Been, I mean, I do. I do have a beer. Like nine years old before the last time you was like that, didn't it? What's that? Were you like nine years old the last time you were like that? Ninety eight percent alcohol. Not not nine nine years old. Ninth grade. <laughs> ninth grade. Okay. Now I remember when me and you met. Yes, that's right. <laughs> manual friends in football. Hey, Kevin. Wait, there. did you go to manual? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you would. Okay. Did what you now, What year did you? I did. I was class of eighty five. I would have been class of 85, but I was a half credit short, and they shipped me oh. down to Central. That was the first or the last year before he went to Magnet. Right. Damn. It was the last year. For the, right. Yeah, it was the last oh. year. And, uh, you had to have so many credits to stay at Manual, and I was a half credit short. Yeah. And, uh, so I, they sent me down Central, and uh, I didn't really want to have too much to do with that. So I took the correspondence courses. And graduated like three months early, but I really did miss walking down the down the aisle with all my friends. Yeah. Well, man, let me ask you oh, guys this: I was class of '84, and and I know you remember when they made the announcement uh, of qualifying to go to manual the following year. Mm-hmm. And do you remember when when the underclassmen walked out and did like a little yeah, no little, middle, yes, protest right. down down the middle of the street and stuff. Yeah, right, no middle yeah. walked yeah. out. Yeah, no middle walked out too. Because it... I was a senior, I was laughing. <laughs> yeah, that uh, that was that was a game changer for a lot of people in that area because it was, you know, yeah, because uh, you know, um, a lot of you know, for the people who considered manual their homeschool, you know, that wasn't going to be yeah. the case starting the next year. So right. yeah, it, it had to go all the yeah, way so. to Central at that point. That would have been a game changer for me, man. Uh, if I was a senior, <laughs> I'd have been like pissed. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I do. That's funny. I, I do right remember now, that. Uh, mm-hmm. I remember. I was uh, deeply affected by it because I didn't graduate manual. You know, That's my right. mother mm-hmm. graduated manual. My uncle graduated manual. Oh, wow. Not me. I, I graduated Jefferson County Public School. There you go. You know? <laughs> so it was a big letdown for me. But I mean, I try not to let it define me or anything. I just kept on going. But I sure did miss. I, you know, I love seeing all my friends walk down the aisle and getting their diploma, but I, I sure did, did, didn't get to do it. Yeah. But oh well. Yeah, moving on. Yeah. <laughs> I was the first in line to get beer. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> you remember, hey, Greg, you remember some of those keg parties we went to? 
Oh, I'm trying. Oh my God! I mean, hellacious was like the whole school was at. I, I mean, I can't even remember everybody's place we went to, but I want to say it was right over there by Byron's house. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh, huh? Southern Southern Heights, that Southern little area Heights. by the liquor store. Remember that liquor yeah. store that was there? It used to be there. And, yeah, uh, Max's. That was Max's Max. Byron's house. Yeah. Right yeah. yeah, yeah. Here we and, go, Kevin. We're talking about other stuff again, man. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you. you yeah. I didn't mean to derail you all. No, hey, that's all right. It's it's actually, it, it it wouldn't be a show unless uh the the segment came off the rails because of you know Greg's <laughs> trips down Mary, you know, down the that that past life and all these little parties. Memory and, lane, memory lane. Hey, man, lane I mean, yeah. you probably were over over Terry Gibson's and, and Shaq's, Mark Shaq's house. I know we used to have uh-huh. some over there. Uh, yep. Uh, you probably come over there with Terry a little bit. Yep, Terry uh, Wyatt. I hung around with Terry, Terry Wyatt. Wyatt. And, uh, yeah. um, I used to roadie for Dave Williams, David Williams, and yeah. uh, just anybody and everybody. I don't care. I'd carry anything just to get into the show. Well, I remember, mm. uh, I, I mean, I was, I was telling Kevin, did you uh, do some road work with uh, with Pat Barris when he was out uh, touring and doing I did. his thing? I, was luck- I did. I was lucky enough to go out with him several times and. Um, when he first started the uh, crazy, crazy train Aussie tribute, you get to run around uh, New Orleans and uh, Florida and actually get paid for it, you know. But that was that was yeah. the fun time. Right. Yeah. That's when you didn't have no responsibilities and things didn't matter. None. You just did what you wanted to at that part. Yeah. At, that, at that point. At, the, at that time, I had no children. I had no, you know, no home of my own. Um, I parked my car at my mom's house. Uh, you know, and didn't, you know, none of us had jobs back then. It was just what you wanted to kind of do. Yeah. First Toy Tiger was open back then. And we, if we even if we ding, had ding, now, ding, 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 I'm going to have to get a sound. Like every time. Tiger. Yeah. Every time the word, someone utters those two words, Toy Tiger, I'm going to play. I've got to come up with a little, you know, like a bell or like something a, that, you know, like, it, like a rim a bo- shot. Yeah, a boxing bell. Yeah, That's something. A boxing ring there you bell. go. That every time because yeah. it's it's not a, a freaking Monday or Wednesday night show unless the toy tiger gets mentioned. So. Oh my goodness! When you can go see a band for five nights, you know yeah. you just don't see yeah. them anymore. You see a band right now for forty-five no minutes. That shit don't happen no more. Mm. No. Yeah. You know, some of my older <laughs> older musicians' friends blame that on mothers against drunk driving. You well, remember that I, old, that organization? Yeah. They started. Yeah, and you know what? You don't even hear about yeah. mothers against yeah. drunk driving now. Yeah, because they're all drunk now. They don't want to mess with. Yeah, them. you know, I guess like they they uh, they got what they wanted. And they stopped bitching. You're right. Yeah. That's but now they, you got they, that Uber that. and all that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> well, that, actually, that's 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 interesting you bring because uh, now you say that back in that day, yeah, you're right. That was mad was a big deal. So everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, was, did that really have an impact on? Yeah. You know, the music absolutely, man. Okay. Yeah, because what had happened is, is it, it scared everybody from going out at least during the week mm-hmm. to see bands. Yeah. Right. Because it's not okay. During the week, you know, I even heard stories that people would cut cops or whoever would come out in the parking lot and mark tires. Now, I don't know. This could be a fable. Yeah. Or this could be kind of out there, but they would mark your tires. With, mm-hmm. with chalk or whatever, and if they see you driving down the road, they would know that you came from that bar or a bar, and yeah. they would oh. just wait, waiting to see if you were going to swerve or have a reason to pull you over to pop you, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and people got tired; they 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 were scared to go out and do it anymore. So of course, attendance went down, and they stopped hiring bands during the week because they couldn't pay for it, and things changed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, wow. uh, and then beer prices, drinks went up because there's less people in the bar. Right. Try to make up for it. You know, well, Toy Tiger, mm-hmm. Toy Tiger never did that, but Phoenix Hill did. I mean, I love Phoenix Hill, but Phoenix Hill, and and, uh, and I never really went to TK's Pub. That was a long haul for me. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, it, it got to where, like, you you know, you go in, you go on a Tiger, you can buy a round for all your friends for under 10 bucks. Mm-hmm. You go to Phoenix Hill, you go to Phoenix Hill, you can get two drinks for 15 you know, <laughs> excluding beer, excluding beer. But, right, you know, right, you, yeah. you know, and usually and usually if you're with your girlfriend or wife, they, you know, more than likely they're going to drink a mixed drink. So that's right. six, seven, eight dollars right there. Then two dollar tip plus your drink. That's, hmm. that's almost a twenty. And if right you and if you show up with your girlfriend and your wife, that's three drinks. And, you know, yeah. that's, that can get expensive. too. <laughs> it's either going to be a good night or a real bad night. <laughs> 
Yeah. Or your wife's girlfriend. Or your wife's girlfriend. Or your wife's girlfriend. Yeah, exactly. That's even, yeah. Uh, oh, As I we, even go this far in daytime. Or even your own boyfriend. He went there. He went there. He went there. Exactly. exactly. Yeah, we now never yeah. see a door we, tonight. We have no bias on this show. Thing. No. Yeah. Well, go, Al, take us down. Give us your music bio. Tell us what, you know, what have you been doing in, with the music scene? How long you've been playing? And let's, let's hear well, the uh, big Al. In the illustrious words of Steve Martin, mine is a sad story. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, I was just affected by music as a young kid. And as I got about 12 or 13, uh, like I said, David Williams was playing drums. My friend Terry Wilde was playing drums. And then you started, you know, going to band practice and seeing Sean Lynch and Steve Lewis and Bill Haley and started roadieing. And Victor then I roadie for, yeah, roadie for like 14 years. And um, I grew up with Phil Bolin. And um, the next thing you know, uh, just, just started, you know, just hanging out with the bands as much as possible because I just love the music. And uh, mm -hmm. went to California, hung out there for a little bit, come back home. And then all of a sudden, everybody that I knew that was kind of playing music kind of just stopped. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, I've kind of got these songs. And um, I went Why out not? to Billy Madison's and uh, just laid down a few tracks. And then I got Billy to lay drums. And then I had a bass player come in and put a bass on it. Then I had Tom Seavely come down from Madison. He put lead to it. I asked Scott Mertz. He uh, he threw some lyrics on there. Then uh, Christy Gambrell, uh, she threw some female vocals on. And then we had this little, you know, we called it the six-pack. And then from there, it was like, man, this stuff actually doesn't sound that bad. <laughs> and then from that, and from there, it was I was hooked. And so I was like, well, now I actually got some songs. I need to get a band and just kind of, you know, go through the, you know, you want to jam? Do you want to jam? Do you want to jam? Blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. Now it's been since 2004, and I feel like a real old man. <laughs> but I love, but mm. I loved every minute of it, and I can't wait to get back at it. I got a few few new songs, and um, and, and and in the course of running into everybody that I have run into, I've run into a guy named John Anderson, who used to be the lead guitar for Almost Noah back in the day. Oh yeah, and yeah. Um, we, I mean, it was it was one of those things where he kind of appeared one night, and. Um, he showed up the next night, and I was just totally amazed at how how great of a guitar player he really was, you know. And he's stuck with me, <laughs> and uh, I, I couldn't believe it. I'm like, you know, here I am, this you know, this uh, this drunken fool with these silly songs, and he's making them, you know, uh, just phenomenal. Yeah. And uh, he got the right, you know, we wrote about well, it's about twelve, twelve to thirteen songs. And uh, got to record about eight of them. A few of them, they're still in the, I guess, call it in the, in the bucket, but they're still there. And it just seems like you never have enough hours in the day to get together as a band now and practice right. and do it. We, and and it, it's pretty much it's like you're a 45-minute band. Any, anything that you go see anymore, it's, mm -hmm. it's usually 45 minutes, maybe an hour. You know, you really don't see, unless, unless you're playing cover tunes, a band right. from – you know, 10 o'clock to 2 o'clock. Right. But if you want to go out and see some new music, you usually just got, you know, hey, these yeah. are our songs. We're going to play them the best we can, and we only got 45 minutes, and, you yeah. know, and you just do what you can. And you have you try to have fun at it, and that's that's the main thing. You've done some pretty cool gigs with Boozer, man. I mean, uh, I was telling Kevin, you've done a lot of, uh, from I guess what I call them, like festival-type shows or where there's been other bands, uh Mm -hmm. uh, kind of a, uh, I, think, I don't know, would you call it an underground kind of genre, um, original type underground, or, or would you, it's not really mainstream. I, I, I'm not sure, but we kind of fit with everybody. We've opened up for David Allen Coe. Yeah, um, that's right. We've opened up for Jackal. Cool. Um, we played alongside um, Black Label Society and Skid Row, and all those, you know, kind of national acts that come through through Terry Harper. Uh, See, Terry, uh, yeah, Terry Harper, he's been like a saint for Boozer. Um, whenever there's a show that's not heavy metal or, you know, not, you know, you know what I'm saying? He's like, well, Boozer will fit perfect there. Right. So he throws, right. us in, he throws us in the mix. And then, we, like I said, we get 45 minutes. You go out there and you just do the best you can to, um, you know, just to have fun and incite the crowd and get them going. 
And um, what what I really dig is when you're up there singing and people are looking back at you and they're bright eyed and they're not and they're, 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 they're they forget what they're doing. You know, they're just kind of like, what what did he just say? What? <laughs> you know, you kind of catch them off guard. You know, because yeah, yeah, because you're always going to run into that. You know, I don't want to sound cliche, but you're going to run into that one chick or that one dude that's going to go, man, you guys were great and all that, you know. <laughs> the, the one person you want, to, you want to come and go, man, uh, that was some pretty cool shit. That's, yeah. that's <laughs> what really, that's the good stuff about it, you know. Mm-hmm. Now, Big Al, you, you, yeah, you reference, you, your comment was, you say when you write these Silly songs, but I mean, yeah, the silly. songs you do, yeah. Well, no, I, <laughs> yeah. All right, let's all right. Silly is maybe one word, but to me, they're. I mean, is it they're like more party songs, or I mean, it's 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 these are have fun. Let's have let's sing about something that you know most people that go see bands at bars are doing. They're drinking, they're puffing, they're. You know, laughing, cutting up. I mean, uh, you're 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 just to me. You're singing or doing music, writing and singing songs that is just perfect for the the scene, the I, vibe. There. I deeply I deeply appreciate that compliment. I just really I just look at what's going on in the news. You know, uh, you know, crack horrors. Uh, you know, uh, I mean, I mean, there's a there's a song and everything. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa! You know, have, what news? Uh, you know, what news source? Wait a minute, Big Al. What news source are you looking at that that what, showcases crack horse? All right, well, you got me there, but I meant like you hear stuff <laughs> and you see stuff, and one little one little word can trigger something. And you know, it only takes really sometimes it only takes about five minutes. To throw enough Stop, yeah. out there on a piece of paper yeah. to develop a chorus, and then it, you know it's like, oh my God, then this will fit. You know, the next thing you know, you you got a, a little rip, and you mm-hmm. put a song together. It's like, damn, that was easy. <laughs> and that's kind of they're just little ditties. I mean, they're two chord progressions. They're silly knucklehead music. Right. But I love no. it. But you know what? And then. And, and, and uh, you know Stephen Stephen Clark, a shout out to him and the asshole. He you know he's kind of said it best because you know he he says you know his riffs and everything are is that kind of a simple riff if you will. Uh, yeah. Or actually, it was the, even Tony Michael Wayne would refer to three chord riff, whatever. But um, uh-huh. but the, their objective was is or his, the bottom line is is Mr. Clark concludes that uh, it does result in a lot of ass shaking in the crowd. Yeah, and, true. Uh, and he's right. But you know what? Yeah, I guarantee remember. it's people gonna be that. funny, Greg, tomorrow night when I tune in CNN to watch Anderson Cooper. It's good. I would just <laughs> love for him tomorrow night to one of his uh news source news stories would be something about crack horrors tomorrow night. That would be cool. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Out of Anderson together. Anderson Anderson Cooper and Crack Horse. Crack horse, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's like a contradictory uh, term, man. Yeah, Condra, yeah. But uh, oh, crack. funny thing about crack whore is uh, a friend friend we called her a co whore, uh, and then we start and we were in we were in uh, working on the stop site, and uh, co whore turned into basically I'm going to drink everything but Pepsi and Mountain Dew and stuff like that, and she was a Coca Cola whore, a co whore. <laughs> and then and then it morphed in the crack whore. And then the words kinda we just kinda put the words together and it, it, it just kinda it just fit. <laughs> and the next thing you know you're singing it, but you really don't want to be singing it, but you can't help but to sing it. And next thing you know it it's done. There you go. Now be now yeah. be honest, at Big Al, when you're singing if you sing a song like that in crack whore is part of the lyrics does does there is there a few people in the audience whose frown or whose smiles go from you know their facial expression go from smiling to this serious look like is he talking about me yeah, yeah well right. it could be it could be but that's the that's the thing that i truly love about when you when you're when you're the person on stage and you're looking out into the crowd and you see mm. and you see them go what did he just say yeah. And but then you know I, I tried through John Anderson I tried it, you know as Boozer as a whole tries to back it up with the music too 
You know, it's just not the lyrics and, you know, uh, baga, boonga, baga, boonga, baga. you know, it's got some flow to it. And like you said, it just wants to get the girls kind of dancing. And they mm-hmm. you know, they're, they're dancing to crack or. Yeah. And if they are frowning, man, they also actually ought to, ought to look at it as a compliment. He's singing a song about me. That's cool. I got a song about Yeah. Him. It's about me. He's singing about me. And, uh, I mean, and they're all kind of like this little story. Last call for alcohol, you know, about the, right. you know, about the guy who's sitting at the bar who really should have been home an hour ago. And, um, oh, my goodness, I can't even think of it. I'm on the spot right now. Uh, bourbon T and LSD. That was a, a, a friend of mine. <laughs> bourbon and tea and LSD. That's the drink for you and me. Loser's best and it ain't no joke. Don't want no shit. You rum and coke. <laughs> One, two. This guy that we, you know, you just run into these people places and, you know, and he goes, he goes, man, he goes, you need to write a song called Bourbon Tea and LSD. And I was like, sounds like you already okay. wrote it. <laughs> yeah, and, there you go. And he, and, and he gave me like, the, he gave me that part. And then, you know, he was a military guy. And so he just started doing like a march, dun, 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 <laughs> uh. <laughs> but I love it. I love it. I'm never giving up. I'm not. I'm not after no record deal. Uh, I could care less about all that garbage. I just want to have fun. I'm almost fifty. Uh, good Lord willing, you know, another five, five to ten years of being able to go out and actually play it without looking like I'm too old to be playing the music. You know, and I'll be happy. Yeah. But uh, still would like to still would like to get get a song and a soundtrack somewhere, or or maybe even a musical. You know, have some people act out like an actor's theater to some of the songs. And, you know, man, you can. Uh, <laughs> I actually, uh, Al, you need to hook up with me after the podcast. Uh, I can give you the name of a, of a uh, website you can go to, and you can submit your songs, and then they can get mm-hmm. picked up uh, by different. Uh, entities and may even show up on a TV show or a movie or whatever, and you can get some mailbox money that way. It's pretty cool. Oh, that would be awesome. If I could, yeah, if I could put cheese on the bologna sandwich, that would be a pretty yeah. good week. <laughs> That's the way you know? put some mayonnaise too, man. You can always <laughs> yeah, you know, it's exactly yeah. maybe some rye bread and maybe ham and just yeah. have a good old sandwich. <laughs> yeah, it. it's all about the sandwich oh, now. It is all about it. it. Is. <laughs> now, when when do you actually um, uh, are able to physically get back on stage and you know have, have I'm a good night at out? March, the first March? night of okay. March. Yeah, okay. I go in for my second surgery January seventeenth, and it'll be six weeks of uh, healing, which is going to be a lot easier to heal this time than it was last time because oh. I won't be. I won't be gutted, you know. I got a, I got about a 14 inch scar from right under my belly to about middle ways up my chest where they went in and took the colon and then the appendix out. But they told me yeah, it was a serious, the next it was person. a serious situation, man. I went through. Yeah, it, it, I didn't. I really didn't realize it. And I, sometimes when I think about it, I I can't believe that I was that close to not being here. Uh-huh. But I am still here, and I'm very lucky. My, I listen to my wife. So if you're, if any guys are out there that are married, listen to your wife. <laughs> I listen to her. She said, something's wrong. Let's go to the doctor. Let's they find know, out. Man. They know. And, of course, they said, you're in big trouble, buddy. You're leaking, you know, you're leaking poop in your body. And so they went in, they cut it and fixed it and cleaned me out and, I was lucky that I didn't become septic or toxic, which are your waste will mix into your bloodstream and give you a, what they call a blood fungi. And if you're lucky, you'll be on dialysis the rest of your life. And mm-hmm. if you're not lucky, you, you know, you know mm-hmm. you'll be pushing daisies. Mm-hmm. So I'm very lucky, mm-hmm. but I'm looking forward to this next surgery because it's not going to be as much 
the incision's only going to be about three inches, they said, and, it, you know, I just can't wait. <laughs> yeah, lucky that uh, you're wait. looking forward to getting it done and getting it over with. Yes, yeah. yes. And, like, you know, and I haven't – I drank a couple of beers the other night with dinner, um, and, like, I'll have a beer a night, when, you know, when you're sitting around. Cause it's almost impossible not to have a beer. You know, but um, pretty much no, no, you know, about 98% alcohol free, uh, trying to watch what I eat now. Um, you know, no corn on the cob, no corn, nothing with seeds in it. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of mashed potatoes, macaroni and cheese, uh, Salisbury steak, uh, pot pie, all that, you know, the soft stuff. Yeah, soft. Mm-hmm. Soft is my friend right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I can't wait to eat a big steak. <laughs> oh my God. I can't wait. I the can't countdown wait. the countdown is uh there is a countdown to when that you get to eat that steak, right? Yeah. March. But I do got something Rumble. else to talk about. Uh, go ahead. We recorded a Christmas original. Uh we recorded it last year and didn't get it out in time. And um Doctor mixed it about a month ago. And I've got it on my phone, and I haven't found a way to upload it to Facebook because it won't accept, like, a MP3. It's got to be, like, a video or something. So I'm getting ready to try to put it put it on a video format or something and put it on there. But it's an original called um, All I Got for Christmas Was a DUI. <laughs> I tell you what, for, for you, for you, Big Al, if you, if you want me to, let's uh, get with me later. I get the song. If you got some images or pics that you want, I can create a, you know, a video for it and upload it to YouTube for you. And then you got the, All right. you got it on it. YouTube. Yeah. So you. we'll, we'll do that. Yeah. Cause I, I tell you what, we got to make this happen before, before next Wednesday, because next Wednesday is what the 21st. It's, it'll be the Wednesday before Christmas. It would be perfect timing to have this yeah. song available. So let's, let's try it's, to do that. I, it's pretty cool. Scott Mertz is doing vocals on it. Um, John Anderson on guitar. Reggie Payne, um, which used to, he used to be in Shatterstone. Um, and um, Jay, uh, Bender, Bender on bass. But it's, uh, it's pretty comical. But it's, uh, I'll tell you what, the, the guitar player, John, man, he just does a phenomenal job, man. He makes everything sound so Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Good time players. Like you know? <laughs> Good stuff. Good stuff. Um, some people play guitar and some people are just guitar players. Mm-hmm. I play guitar. I'm not a guitar player. <laughs> I try to play guitar. Guitar sing writer of I'm cool songs. <laughs> you sang. You I'm sang. A singer. I'm I'm more like a lead drinker. <laughs> <laughs> Not a singer, I'm more like a drunk Frank Sinatra. Well, I got. Well, I can tell you, Kevin. I, I can remember a long time. Oh man, a long time ago, Al called me up and asked me if I'd do a gig with him. Yes, and I remember. We, we actually played a gig. It was a CD release party for. Um, gosh, we had him on the show. A two pump chump. Yeah, it was two pump chump at Rustic Frog. At, at Rustic Frog, and uh, uh-huh. and we did one set. And Al, as soon as we started playing, man, he broke out a freaking fifth of what? What was it, Al? Makers? I think it was very old Barton at the time. Very old Barton, okay. And, dude, (laughs) by the time that set was over with, I was sloshed. (laughs) Because he's passing it around. And I'm not turning it down. I'm turning it up. So, of course. Yeah. Yes. It was a good time. Let me tell you something about Greg. He came in there on a Sunday, and we practiced a set like, Maybe twice, and because everybody's got things to do, everybody's got places to be, wives to take care of, children to do that. We practiced about two hours, or went through the set about two times, and that was it. And Greg come out there and just nailed it. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> Thanks, man. It was fun, man. It was a fun gig, yeah. that's for sure. And then as soon as it's over, Greg said, "See ya." <laughs> Greg was gone. Uh, I don't. What was I? Was I? Was I go? I was probably trying to get home to get to bed because I was so drunk. <laughs> <laughs> that was probably the time our old ladies were calling us. No, actually, I did hang out, man. I hung out and watched the two pumpers. Yeah. 
But uh, I'm very lucky. I got a sweet old lady. She doesn't drink, and when I do drink, she she helps me make it home. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, you know me. If I, if I wasn't married and had children or anything like that, I'd go wherever the wind would go, and then I'd just sleep in my car. You know, <laughs> wake up the next day, wake up four or five o'clock in the morning because you're freezing, and then you know, start the car and go home or wherever home was. Right. Usually, my mom's house. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I spent all my money on alcohol. I didn't have nothing to rent. <laughs> that's, Al, you that's, can, uh, that's, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. I was going to say, Al, you can pitch your, pitch your t-shirts, man, if you want to. Try to drum up some yeah. business. <laughs> Go for it. Sure, uh, Hollywood screen printing. Um, I'm really just word of mouth. I don't advertise on Facebook. And I just basically just word of mouth, friends and family and uh, close, you know, people who have businesses. But, uh, you just check out Boozer, make a follower Kentucky on Facebook, and uh, tell me you need shirts, and I'll make sure it gets done. Getting ready to do some shirts for uh, Raul. Uh, used to be with uh, oh, yeah. Breckenridge and Element Age. Getting ready to do mm-hmm. some shirts for him. And then uh, a new band that I haven't heard called Gravel and Spiders. Uh, haven't, haven't heard them, but they're getting ready to do some shirts and – Speaking of them, yeah. Speaking of them, speaking of them, Greg, uh, gravels and where am I? Let me find it. Have you heard of them, Greg? No, I have not. Have not. Yeah, they're uh, gravels and spider, gravel and spiders. Um, yeah, they're uh, they they're going to be on our sh- on our show on January tenth, second segment. Um, evidently, they they are. Um, they're uh, very close with uh, the uh, shit. Two pump chump is that right? Uh, I'm trying. I can't remember who it was. But anyways, that's kind of they. They had reached out to me, and uh, yeah, so they'll be on uh, yeah. in a I January show. So you know, talking to Al, man, he's giving me some ideas about some people to reach out to. So uh, yeah, that's, that's a good thing. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, like I haven't heard of, but I'm getting ready to get some shirts for him, so I'm sure they're doing pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. So any, anybody out there want some shirts, man? Get in touch with Al or. Uh, Al Harley, or uh, you can get in touch with myself or Kevin, and uh, we right. can hook you up with Al. He, he does the good, yes. good screen pr- uh, screen printing shirts, and uh, and uh, do you upright. So yeah, yes, there you go. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, Al. We um we're rounding down this segment. Um, you got surgery coming up. It's, got... been privilege, it's been a privilege speaking with you, gentlemen. I'm, I deeply appreciate the offer, and oh, um, good stuff. I wish nothing but the best for both of you guys. Well, we um, keep keep us posted on your 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 you know show the back the show that you come back to and uh, gotta come out and hang out with you. So and get your Christmas uh, yeah. get your Christmas song in if you can, and uh, yeah. we got another yeah. Christmas song. As soon as I yeah, as soon as I take yeah. a shower and get all prepared for, I got uh, every night I got to take a shower and get all kind of cleaned up, <laughs> uh, put the bag on. Yeah, my oh, wife makes me shower about every night or two also, man, if I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you never want to go to bed dirty. No. You, you never want to go to bed dirty. Yeah. Yeah, especially because you got to sleep in it too. Exactly. <laughs> and every once in a while, make sure it's on your side. It's on <laughs> your side. <laughs> make sure it's on your side every once in a while, you know. Every you yeah, you, you got to. Take one for the two. <laughs> oh, gosh. Big Al, tonight. I appreciate it. Yeah, the Thanks, pleasure buddy. was ours. Good stuff. Down the road, man. If you need anything, just shout, buddy. I'm down the street. All right, I appreciate it, and um, I'll see you all later. All, all right, right take, take care, care. brother. Okay. Right. Thank you. Big Al, Harley, Boozer. Um, we didn't get to do the song, Greg, in between the segment. Now, is this something... Do you want? See, I can oh, add it to the upload. Yeah, we we'll just do it. You can do that, and we can do it next week or whatever. Ain't no big deal. Well, let's. I I wanted to add it tonight. So, uh, yeah. there's a song that we're gonna. I'm gonna add to the upload, so people will be able to check it out. Um, so I won't play it now, but they'll hear it uh, when they upload it. Yeah. So give us the story with this this Christmas song. Well, I, I don't know how it originated or anything, but uh, I'd gotten a call from Phil Bright. Uh, Louisville recording studio. Um, mm-hmm. I do work in there once in a while, and uh, he's been working with Carl Stuck, 
uh, Carl, a local guy around here. He's, he plays actually he plays in Mary Mary, guitar player. Right. Um, mm-hmm. He also he also does the full contact karaoke, and he also does uh, um, his acoustic solo stuff around town. And uh, he he mm-hmm. had wrote a uh, he wrote a Christmas song, and uh, they want they wanted me to come in and play drums on it. You know, it, it's a you know, it's a cool neat little neat little Christmas song, and uh, and uh, I, t- I got on Facebook about. 15 minutes before we come on air tonight, and there it was. They they had got it got it finished, threw it up there, so I checked it out, and it, it came out really well. So, uh, yeah, you can put it on the uh, on the playback, and, and uh, yeah. eventually we're going to get Carl. We're going to try to work it out to get Carl on the show because we're yeah. well when we start Tuesdays, we'll be able to get him and some other people on the show um, mm-hmm. that usually play on Wednesday nights. So that that'll work out really good too. Yeah, uh, some little self-promoting here. I didn't get to mention earlier. Uh, social media, you can find our shows on SoundCloud and the Stitcher apps, YouTube and iTunes. Subscribe to the shows, please. Twitter at The Shooting Lip, at Kevin Hale 423 at Greg underscore Unthank. You can also like us, follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, as Greg mentioned, Tuesday, uh, starting in, Jan- or in Jan- you know, January 2017, uh, I do believe it is the first Tuesday. In 2017, we are going to be moving our this show from Wednesday nights to Tuesday nights. And we'll be sharing that more info on that. But, uh, yeah, that'll be the first um, first Tuesday in January, which it is January. No, actually, it's January 3rd. So stay tuned for that. And then stay tuned to the Carl Stuck Christmas song, which is called An Elf Named Mo." Yeah, isn't it? So, Greg, you got a gig this weekend, correct? Yeah, Saturday we're playing over at the uh, Horseshoe Casino. Horseshoe, right? Yeah. Okay. Spare that change, is Spare Change spare Millionaires. So bring it very on. Very cool. And then bring it on. Uh, trying to think. Got a couple else. gigs. Uh, uh, then yes, I got we... New Year's. Uh, we're doing mm-hmm. a New Year's gig. I'm gonna throw this in with uh, Spare Change Millionaires. We're playing at the. Uh, uh, oh gosh, I can't remember. It's a uh, one of those Catholic school. Uh, uh, New Year's party, and then the thirtieth, I'll be playing with uh, Christine Devereaux. Uh, oh, really? At the horse? Yeah, at the Horseshoe Casino oh. on the thirtieth. Oh, so, cool! So, looking forward to doing that. that that's a be a cool thing. I've never never got to play with Christina, and uh, looking forward to that. Cool. Our last show for the year will be next Wednesday, December twenty first. Uh, so we'll do that'll be the show before Christmas. We won't we won't have a show in between Christmas and New Year's and then we'll come back on that first Tuesday in January. So uh good 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 show tonight. Uh, again, uh yeah. Mike Mike Van Meter, Mary Beth Van Meter from Mary Mary, Al, Big Al, Harley. Big Al. Big Al from Boozer. Uh all right, bring, Greg, good show. It. Yes, uh, for Mr. Unthank, Kevin Hale, signing off. We bid everyone a good Wednesday night and a great Thursday. Peace out, Lowell. Good night. No time where any animals or people hurt during this presentation of Shooting from the Lip. It happened at an airport last December Just after Christmas Day had come and gone A short man on vacation started up a conversation And he told a tale I'd like to pass along he said this Christmas season nearly killed him With work-related stress this time of year He said that I would doubt it But he'd tell me all about it If I buy us both a frosty glass of cheer He said you may believe in Santa The workshop reindeer elves and ho, ho, ho But at the top in Santa's shop In charge of shipping is an elf named Mo. If I had ever once considered The nightmare of logistics for St. Nick 
How does Santa know which toys are for which girls or for which boys Unless somebody loads and labels for the trip I chuckled as he went on with his story The details that he gave were quite concise He said sometimes for kicks he changed the labels on the gifts But he would never switch a naughty for a nice He said you may believe in Santa The workshop reindeer elves and ho 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 But at the top in Santa's shop In charge of shipping is an elf named Mo. But every word I swear to you is true The moral of the story is that those who get the glory Often have some help from folks you never knew You know you may believe in Santa The workshop reindeer comes and ho 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 But at the top in Santa's shop In charge of shipping is an elf named Mo At the top in Santa's shop In charge of shipping is an elf In charge of shipping is an elf named Moe